So Philly is the podcast. We back again with another episode. I'm your host, SPI the most Easty, aka VJ Keyway, aka Spotted Oak. Y'all already know what it do. <clears throat> I have to be honest. I know I, I say things things similar to this often upon the introduction of an episode, but however, I am exceedingly excited about my guest today for a number of reasons. Um, I usually don't give such a long background, but before I allow him to have the floor. For the most part, I just want to give a couple of explanations as to why I appreciate this moment so much. Uh, um, first of all, um, I want to introduce y'all to uh, Big Ron Ron from West Side Road in the neighborhood 60s. Um, not only is that my homie, also we have realized that we are family members and he's also a very close uh, relative of the late great uh, Raymond Washington. So these are the, the the reasons why I'm very excited to have him as a guest today. To give y'all a little background, y'all know where I'm from. I'm from the East Side, 97th Street. And before I was actually claiming and banging on the East Coast, as a child, I grew up in my father's house on 99th Street, and we used to claim 99 East Side hustlers all of my neighbors before we turned East Coast which 99 Eastside Hustlers is no longer. And one of my um, <clears throat> God brothers, Maurice Williams, who also was from 99 Eastside East East Hustlers, when we turned East Coast, cause like his mama stayed on the West Side, he turned 60s. But the reason why Maurice became my God brother is because my father purchased a house in 1970, something 71, 72 on 99th Street. His across the street neighbor was a man named Michael Williams. My father's name is Tommy Williams. My oldest brother is Tommy Williams. Michael Williams had a son named Michael Williams. My brother, my oldest brother, and uh, Tommy, a big Michael, they was best friends. Maurice was Michael's brother. We all had the same last name, Williams. So from his child, my brother, my father and his father was tight. It was a group of boys in both houses. Shout out to Michelle, their sister. But we was just always called ourselves brothers because it's Williams, we was best friends. And we grew up banging together. So when my, my god brother Maurice Williams turned baby Ron Ron from 6-0, without putting nothing out there, we know all the legendary shit got caught up in. Your name, cuz, to me, just been a, a big ass shit before I ever got a chance to meet you from a young nigga. Cuz my, my brother is your little homie, and I know all the business. So I'm just knowing the business. And then my homie King Ron Ron just was associated with that name. I know what it is. Damn. Years later, cuz. I'm doing this public uh, inter in, um, podcast and I'm doing interviews. I try to steer away from the raw gang um, content, but our history and our experience often bleeds into what I do. So just want the, the, the audience to know, April 22nd, 2023, I go to my non-affiliate cousin's birthday party. Um, he turned 50 years old. It happened to be the same day as the Devontae Davis last fight. And I'm going there to support him. I love him to death. Shout out to Clarence. Love you, cuzzo. And as I'm there, I realized that one of his other guests is Big Ron Ron from 6 0, who is his first cousin on his father's side. That's my first cousin on my mother's side. Now, although I never got an opportunity to meet Ronnie through my young life, the other cousins on their side are like Reggie, Lester, uh, April, Crawford, Jermaine, shout out baby cowboy from 9 on my low. Them is, we grew up as cousins. I just never, so I've been knowing the legend of who you are all my life through my god brother, then through my cousins. Then Reggie, shout out Reggie, who was almost a hoover who grew up as one time, that was my big cousin with the most street experience that I used to lean to. He was real aggressive. I thought he was for the beef from Hoover at one point where he was claiming it. But anyway, love you, cuzzo. He used to explain to me our close connection with Raymond Washington bloodline, and I never really wanted to really believe it or buy into it or associate myself with it because I didn't really, you know, know how to explain it to the next nigga. But the fact that in 2023, I bump into you at my family member shit, and you love him like I love him, and we, and plus the Maurice, I'm just very honored to have you here today, big homie, on my mama, mama. All the time. So um, the title of this uh podcast is facts over feelings um i know you just did a, a very long stretch before we get into the lot of random conversation that i would like to have i just want to give you opportunity to you know explain to the um audience a little bit of your history uh, you know whatever you would like to do as far as introduction of yourself a little bit what you've been through and what you're looking to do on the positive side now that you're back out here amongst the wild okay well yeah my name is ron 
You know, they call me Ron Ron. Uh, as he's mentioned, Reggie is my first cousin. April is my first cousin. You know, their daddy and my daddy are brothers. Raymond Washington is our uncle, which is my father's brother. That's deep. You know what I'm saying? My father's the oldest of five. Okay. So it's my dad, which is Ronnie Joe, is Donald Ray, is uh, Reggie, is Raymond, and is Derrod. Okay. So it's five boys by my grandmother. So That's my grandmother hard. be 93 next month. She's still alive. She's still kicking. God bless Granny. Oh, my mama, mama, mama yeah. love you, Granny. Yeah. So, um. How, how, growing up, being a youngster, knowing that you was that close to the originator of all this, how did that influence you? And just how was that? And still knowing that to this day, like. I never told nobody who my uncle was. I never told nobody that nobody wouldn't have never known unless the All Hood magazine came out and Kev Mac interviewed my pops. Oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? They interviewed Derrod. They interviewed, you know, and they wouldn't have never known because I, I never broadcast that. I never put that out there. You being a youngster jumping off the porch and being involved in activities, was it directly under his influence or separate? I think it was kind of separate because I grew up around who I grew up around, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of the things that happened, before I was even game banging, as far as uh, I could tell a cat, a cat can ask me where I'm from, and I could say I don't bang, but where you live? I said I live over here. He said he from Spoopty Whoop, and they'll try to rush you, mm-hmm. and all that old type of stuff, and he'll be like, "Damn man, I might as well just mm-hmm. motherfucker gonna just be jumping on the cat because of where he live. He might as well be from over here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting beat up for this shit or getting jumped for this shit, so let me just go ahead and you know do what I do, and that's what happened, really. Um, I grew up around the, uh, around the homies and stuff. And when they break it down from the fronts to the hills, like what you affiliate with? I'm out the back, the, 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 the over hills. But okay. uh, you know, before it was over here, it was back hood. You know right. what I mean? So yeah, I'm, okay. a, I'm a back hood baby, but I'm a, I'm a hill baby. If you really wanna say that, hill baby, it's, it's all it's all six. But it, was, it was it's all one. Right. I don't push. Right. One without pushing the other, you know. Like what I'm on saying? my side, I push all up too. I get it. So today in my in my life today, I just I just feel like if a, if a cat asks me who I am, I tell him I'm I'm round round, but formally, mm-hmm. and you know, if you want to know where I'm from, I'm, I was from '60s. It, mm-hmm. All that. Yeah, I'm section, from. It's different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from '60s, but if you know where I want to, where I grew up, I mean, grew up in Over Hills, back hood. Right. right. But at the end of the day, I kicked it from all through the hood. I I didn't section myself. So I was everywhere in the hood. That, can't nobody say that I just stayed back here. I was everywhere in the hood, and, and you know. Man, we we since we talking about that region, that environment. I asked you ahead of time, was anything off uh, limit? You said no. Kind of give you a briefing about my interest about this certain subject. Your homies on the internet right now getting a lot of attention. Um, in particular, Brick Baby Cowboy. 600. I just want to generally give you opportunity to get your thoughts on what's happening with the whole world. Because I know me being affiliated with the Eastside Crips, it's some things that happened on the internet that I wasn't proud of that I didn't think should bleed over. And I was forced just based on being affiliated and then just being on the internet, I had to respond and react to certain things on the internet. And I hated it, but I did it just based on that's where it took place. So the fact that these certain things are bleeding over to the internet. I'm curious to just get your thoughts on, you know, each of those individuals and the part they play in this arena on the internet. Okay, so my take on that, as far as, uh, I guess you want to call him Cowboy. <laughs> I know him by another name, I ain't, you know, but that's-, that's TCKM? Little, cat, little Kev Mac, mm. Thundercat or whatever. Yo, Shout out to Kev Mac, yeah. Kev Mac videos. Kev Mac, Mac, my bro, Big here. Kev, that's I'm my boy. Saying, I don't know Cuz, but Cuz know a lot of people He's I know. He's a good dude, man. Much love. Night Solid, boy. too, man. Yeah. You grew up with him. But, uh, you out the section, you out the OVOs, too. Okay. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, as far as that go with, with, with uh, him and uh, Six, I met Six Honey when I came home. I met, I actually met him in the gym. Okay. I met Six, I was doing some back arms, I was, and he walked over me. <laughs> And I'm looking, he's like, I'm 600. <laughs> and I looked, I'm like, what? And I jumped up, but I'm like, okay, cool, I'm 600. I'm so okay. But that's how I met him. We was cool, though. <coughs> and and I, I just seen him about a month ago up at uh, Hungry Heroes or whatever. You know, they all hang out at Hungry Heroes. So I went over there, I seen him, you know, kicked it with him, whatever. 
but this is before I've seen all these videos. Mm -hmm. So now that I see the videos, I haven't seen him, but I don't feel, he feel the way he feel. You can't take away how he feel. In relation to the cowboy. In relation to that. Mm -hmm. You can't take away and how I gotta he feel. I got to say, I agree with him on the politics he's speaking on directly on the issue, so go ahead. But it's how you do it. Mm -hmm. I you don't agree. go on the, you don't, because I feel like you're not just, when you do that, it's like, it's, it's like you don't want to make the whole collective look bad on this. It's because it's like when you say certain stuff, it made it seem like we condone what he do, mm -hmm. and we don't condone we don't condone nothing that's that's faulty. We don't we don't do that. And I, I don't speak on Kev Mac, on uh, Cowboy. I don't I don't speak on him. I don't say nothing about him. You know what I'm saying? Because what, what how I feel is how I feel. But however I feel, I'm gonna I'm bring it to him and I'm gonna yeah. let him know. But I haven't even spoken to him since all the nip stuff, and I haven't spoken to. Him. I've seen him in passing one time, and we just passed each other. I said, right. "What's up?" And, he, and I kept it pushing. But I, I went to his, I been to his shop, cause I did want to talk to him about some stuff he was saying, mm -hmm. and I wanted to address it to him face to face. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't in his, he wasn't in his shop downtown. Yeah, he wasn't in his shop. I had called him. One of his workers called him. I told him I'm down. I want to holler at you. He was like, he, he was busy. He'll be there in an hour. I was like, well, no, I'll catch you when I catch you, bro. I'm not tripping. I'll see you. So he so happened to be, I guess, around the corner a couple weeks ago. I, I'm i not going to work, man. You know, I'm a working man. Right, I go to work. Should be. I come home. I don't. How long was your vacation? Shit, nigga, I did 30, almost 30 years. So, you know, I have a responsibility, man. I have, I have, I got to pay bills. I can't pay bills sitting on the corner hanging with the homies. I'm sad. Do oh, my mama, so. mama. I don't even yeah. know how to, like, put my mind frame and the mind frame to even feel for you with that yeah. chunk of time to uh, night bud. But yeah. go ahead. So, my thing is, I'm not going to be going looking for him and, and speaking my mind. If he happened to come around and I see him, I'm going to pull him over and tell him how I feel. Because I was there when he got put on. Mm. I was right there when Cowboy got put on. Right. He came on, on the block. He came to me. And a couple of homies said he wanted to be from the hood. Mm. What took, year? This is in 90, 89, 90. And we took him over there. The nigga fought seven dudes, bro. No exaggeration. He fought seven cats. Seven, That's hard. Seven good people. That's hard. I don't hood. And he survived. He he survived. He and he could fight pretty good. So everything he's saying on that media about fighting. But he's convinced he, the world of that. I think everybody used to leave him on that. He'll fight on the set. He'll fight like a mug. So you explain know. to the world though when you violate the code. But when you do something, how that don't benefit you no more. It don't it? Don't that yeah. tears your whole character down? I don't know the logistics of what he said. I never seen nothing, but I've heard about it. And he's not saying that he didn't. That's the, but, that's what, the, but what he is saying is that he didn't put nobody in prison. I didn't do this. But however, he did aid in the extension yeah. of the sentence with yeah. his yeah. part yeah. kind of like convinced yeah. the jury of first degree versus manslaughter is what he's getting accredited for. And we know that to me, I feel like that preserved the life of the person that took this life. So in the way we get down, manslaughter would have served us better. Throwing yeah. back out here. Yeah. You feel me? But, you know, that's how I look at that. I'm not going to be involved on the internet sweating because, but the subject is very open on the internet. It's open. And cuz done personally addressed me in the subject matter when I only spoke to what we always taught, what we all know. Yeah. It had nothing to do with him personally. I could take his name out and insert any other name and the rules should still apply. Yeah. And I've never seen nobody uh, give a statement at interrogation, make it to the grand jury and testify, then make it to the trial and testify on the behalf of the prosecution, and on top of that, show up at the sentencing to deliver a victim impact statement. Cause stop it. And I'm not gonna even I seen it. I seen that part too. But yeah. uh, and I ain't gonna even introduce yeah, into this conversation. Part. Yeah. The SA allegations, the Megan's law, I leave that alone. Yeah. I ain't want to put no pressure on you, big homie, to dwell on that. But uh, yeah. I mean, I I can't really dwell on it because I don't know nothing about it. I was, you know, all this took place when I was incarcerated. I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the logistics of that. So, tell but, me this: you just did thirty years. Yeah. And 
Okay, bam. It's nobody business when it comes to politics, uh, what the six O's do with a six O that don't stick to the code on the yard. Yeah. But tell everybody if that the way we know it, if cuz was on the yard and everybody that know, no. We leave it to the six O's. How long do the six O's got to handle their business before somebody else gonna step in? With, be, with him being that bad. That'd be immediately. He Thank won't be able to uh unpack his stuff. As soon as they find out he on the yard, they they gonna get rid of him. I mean, that that depends on where you at. What yard you at? Who actually what be prison on there? You at, how who's the yard come? you on? I mean, who's who who's on the yard? But ninety nine point nine percent of the time, if you did some shit like that, you're not even coming to the yard, bro. Period. Because if you do, you already know what's gonna happen. Period. So my thing, how it's done on the streets, is just. I remember back in the day. Back in the day, like you know, I'm not a '90 banger. I, I came around the '80s, so. Of course, and I'm a '90 banger, yeah, y'all. So my G on the. I, I feel like, back in the day, politics was way different than it than it is now or back then. So, um, if you was foul, you was foul. There you go. You know what I mean? And if you was a buster, you was a buster, and you're not finna be hanging around. Did you finna get the get the hell up off the block? Period you just, point. It's just certain. Places you just can't hang around with real dudes and they just see you that way. You know Period what I'm saying? Point. So, uh, as far as the 600 Cowboys situation, um, I just feel like 600 can do it differently. I, I feel like he can do that differently. You know what I'm saying? And if I was to talk to him face to face, I would tell him that, like, bro, this could be done differently, bro. You don't have to put him on blast on the media because now it's looking like people's looking for views when they do it, you know what I'm saying? So my thing is whatever you got going on with him, it got to be it, it has to be addressed amongst your, amongst yourselves. Mm-hmm. Some type of way. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't run into him, then wait till you do. You gotta have patience. Just wait till you do it. Don't even worry about it. Sound advice yeah. for you from a G homie to a little homie and it's already happening. I think you can't really take nothing better than that. Yeah, you know just saying? just wait when you see him, then you address it. And if a cowboy see you you address it. What do you think about the element that permeates through game banging everywhere now, though, that when somebody is obviously foul and when one person seems to speak up on it and acknowledge it, the energy of uh, that's between y'all. Uh, Mozzie just put out a, a verse. It's just not it's not even a whole song. It's one verse and it's called Turn Your Back On Me. And the first few bars say, I love it so much because I can relate so well. The niggas say, uh, I knew that y'all would cross me. Niggas did that, but I ain't never took a loss without no get back. If we was really brothers, could have fixed that. Instead of come between and intervene, niggas just sit back. And then like he go on like, to the rest of the verse to let you know what happens when he all bad. The fucking organization, the coalition don't come and correct it and act like it's just between me and y'all. Whatever happened after that, it's, remember it was just between me and him. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Just between me and cuz. What you feel about that? Because I remember when it was a time when if a nigga was bad, even if it was to an individual, once the rest of the situation realized, he couldn't be comfortable nowhere amongst the woods. What do you say about that new element in the game? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like how I rock with my folks. You know what I'm saying? I rock, I, I rock pretty good with those I've, I deem my friends and I deem my bros. I rock with them. You know what I'm saying? Likewise. I rock with them. We finna get off that. I, yeah. know, that shit could get deeper and deeper. Yeah, do, my brother, do my brother got action that coming home? Cause yeah. Maurice, I love you, yeah. Rody. Yeah. Baby Ron yeah. Reezy. Yeah, you got that. I talked to him last week. He, Is that right? He finna go back to boy. He, he gonna be all right. He got his head right, man. That's right. He, he is. But I want to just say, as far as <clears throat> Brick Baby and all that, I, t- I spoke with Brick Baby. Okay. Brick Shout out Baby. to my love, like yeah. Wood. I, I, I talked to him, man. Basically, I just told him, man, you got to stay off the internet, man, with all that, man. This ain't cool. That's not a good look for you, bro. Whatever you on the internet doing, I, sh- I feel like if you're going to be on the internet, you're trying to uplift people, up, uh, mm-hmm. uplift people, man. You ain't going on there trying to look hard, trying to be this ultimate game banger and Say this, say that, I'll knock you out, I'll do this. No, you on here trying to make a difference, man. Uh-huh. That's what that internet is for, to try to make a difference in, in changing lives, man, and, and people seeing the change in you. 
And that's what I you know always what I mean? try to project. And yeah. all my G homies, all my reputable homies from the Marsteins, from the Nine, to Kiko, from the Eight, Big Demon, my big bro, SPI, from Slim Bad, from Five Nine, to the uh, homies from One Nine. No, everybody that tap in with me, the deuces, they all tap me on my back for the way I present myself, yeah. represent without putting no extras on it. I don't involve with the set and none of my shit. And I think that's the way you post to present yourself upon the internet. Exactly, and 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 one person that I take, I'm gonna use as an example is Big U. Salute, my big homie, my big bro. Hey, that's, but, the, that's the big bro. That dude watch me come around, watch me grow up for real, for that's real. Right. And if you didn't know him, niggas knew him by Big U. But if niggas knew him draws. in the hood, they call him Draws. Look, I'm gonna show you something right now, cause I can't believe you just said that. Look. And I've been having this number in my phone for like maybe almost 20 years. But I just want to show you what this number is in my phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's I'm what sad. I'm saying. So he's, hey, when he's hey, on hey, the hey, internet. You see the name on top of his? Yeah, that's, right. that's the one. That yeah. ain't no baby little. That's yeah, that's yeah, my low. Yeah. Chris, so, big Jack six dudes. Love you, yeah. low. We used to have all together. Go ahead. Yeah, he was on the one yard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was on the fire yard together. Yeah. Avenal? Yeah, I was there. That's I where I met Black Dog. Yeah, Black Dog. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So And Snake. Yeah. And um Some six Snake. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the homie. Go ahead. But like Big U. He when he's on the internet, he's always talking about helping these kids. As he should. And he and he show by I had three sons on the football team. Exactly. No charge. Which yeah. was um into the thousands. Free cleats, not the kind that you get off the shelf. Yeah. He was getting cleats from like Deshaun Jackson, niggas like that. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson. I had three yeah. sons placed into the program, fully accepted, fully equipped. They had to pay a dollar. The neighborhood yeah. to the neighborhood late yeah. for that low. Yeah. So he's a dude that's making the difference with these kids. You know what I'm saying? Even when the little shit going on with him and the whack 100. Ho no 100, yeah. Yeah, him. And, um, Fuck her. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know him. You ain't got you to. Know, yeah. When you learn what I learned, you will. Yeah. Feel like I feel. My mama, mama, go ahead. But when he was going at it with him with that, his main focus was still servicing these kids. Well, my he mama, didn't care mama. about what dude got to say. Fuck with Big U, cuz when it was like super on with me and whack, like it's, it's been fuck her for a long time, only because he lied on me on the internet. On my character, told a whole big lie on me. But I remember through all that, me and Big U politics just being who it is. Like I told you, I had three sons on his team. I remember my son was like 11 years old, and he get in my DM on Instagram, which he never does, and say, Wack 100 was at my game today. And I'm thinking he telling me this because he know I don't fuck with Wack. So I'm like, yeah. He was like, yeah. I'm like, what'd he say? He say, he say, uh, I told him spotted my daddy. I said, what'd he say? He say, we texted the deal. He like, he said, oh, he said, big spotter or little spotter? He said, I told him little spot. He said, oh, but my son interested in him was Blueface. Yeah. He only excited because it's Wack 100 Blueface. So I remember uh, at the time I had to like hop, like, neighborhood, but that's crazy. Fuck. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead. See what no, you no, said. No, God, no, that no, whole ass Yeah, thing, yeah. But I was just saying that. He told my son, he like, oh, yeah, I know your daddy. That's my home. Boy. He lied to my son. Go ahead. But the thing I was trying to say is even when people have something negative to say about him, he do something more positive because he know what his focus is. I was just with him last week at Crenshaw and he was doing something for these kids and doing doing something about expunging your cases and stuff. This is the stuff that... No, he ain't. Shit, yeah, he is. <laughs> he was up at Crenshaw. That's that conversation. Yeah. I've been dying to hear. Yeah. And we was up there and, you know, it, it. my thing is when you do stuff like that, that's what needs to be on the internet, bro. Exactly. That That's what needs to be out there that people try to see. When you're talking about uh, reform, that's reform, bro. Mm -hmm. That's reform. That's That's... Prison reform, juvenile reform, life good, reform, life reform. That's 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 what Reforming it is. Reforming another generation before yeah. they need to reform. Exactly. Yeah. Man. So nobody care about you hanging on Slauson and Crenshaw, right, or hanging right. out on the east side, hanging out talking about I'm out here this that's and played. that. And come on, nobody care about that. Nah. But I do care about, and what I, I'm interested in is a motherfucker trying to change his life and trying to change the world. As my homie, shout out to James Hagley, uh, J Stone, change the world. I work for him, Urban Outcome. Okay, that's but right. Yeah, change the world. So, so Ur what is Urban Outcome directly associated with? What's their goal, mission? Safety and service, uh, to uh, help help the people, uh, 
Like the homeless. The homeless. Yeah, we try to get them high. Oh, you mentioned homeless, baby. Thinking think of the homies. Yeah. Five, five, crib. Yeah, neighborhood to the neighborhood. Shout out C Mac. Let's see, when we go around there, we. Get with the homie Big Ron Ron, C Mac. You see yeah. you how you trying to push your homeless mission. You got a G homie founded in this shit that can, like, make that shit make a lot more sense. I'm going to put y'all together, cuz. Go ahead. But our thing is more than just feeding them. We, okay. We put them in the system to get get matched for housing in the shelter program. Mm. And then once they get housing in the shelter program, then they get a caseworker or whatever it may so be. So are y'all putting people on 69th in that new we building? In, we all in, I don't know. I okay. don't know, but I know we got that area though. That's uh, our grid over there. So okay. Urban Alchemy, we we really try Shout to Shout out to Bam from the jungle. Shout out to my yeah. homie Baby Stein. Uh, oh, Bam, that's my um, boy. You know, yeah, yeah. He, he, run, he run like a, a security detail yeah. that places people in different places. Yeah. And this, that's why I love black people because based upon they got to get their money, there's been some Damus right there. You know, that replaced the old 69 apartments. Mm -hmm. So could them, and it's been some security guards that's full-fledged Damus that got to sit there, wear a uniform, and try to get their check and appease their boss and still deal with the homies running in and out that thing. Mm -hmm. And because certain people are in place and communicating, the shit has been able to go cohesively without shit going out of... Uh, Hand. So that's why I want to shout out my homie Stein and Bam, because you know I love when black people are able to do the right thing. We've been proving for years we know how to fuck up, mm -hmm. and now I'm in a place in my life where I'm very um, excited about the fact that we can. It's almost like when you see a human with a lion on stage. Yeah. The fact that all that rage and potential to do all that damage now that we can um, harness it, and because just it was something real ironic happened recently with me, as inactive and distant as I am from the set and activity. Some shit happened with one of my little homies in a group of Santanas. And it got to swelling, swelling, swelling to the point where motherfucker who know I really don't fuck around felt like at this point I gotta call cuz. So I had to tap in and as the politicking went, it took three days and two was a big meetup and where everything that could potentially go wrong ended up going right. And I, I spoke on this um, very briefly on my podcast, on my um, live recently and those that involved know what it is, but in the same sense, I'm just proud of those that really are willing to um, throw it away, using that same discipline to hold on to it, man. And I want to salute you because from what you've been through and now to come out on this side on the positive push, you um, are being a part of a production based upon the founder, Raymond Watching Life, or not a documentary. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, we're doing a movie called Birth of a Crip, which is big. You was involved. Like, but he, he's like, he got his hand in everything Crip yeah, related, cuz. Listen, man, that brother knows his stuff he got a good heart and god knows his intentions and that's why he's being blessed you yes, know what i'm saying i agree so, god keeps his eyes on so, babies and fools yeah it's called birth of a crib uh kenya where myself and my my bro uh lamont baby waco shout out to baby waco shout out to cut um we talked we were sitting in the living room one day and we were just talking about doing the dive like a i turned in my because i wrote a journal in prison mm. was it tough is it i would no not yet but okay. i turned them into memoirs Kenya had talked to me into turning them into memoirs. So we talked about that. If you're looking um, to publish a plug. I'm looking for one. There's one right there. He can put you in touch with whoever, whenever, wherever. All okay. right, go ahead. And, and um, we was talking about it. So we was like, okay, we're going to talk it in my own words. So we talked about that. Then she was like, well, you know, we can make this into a movie. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. She said, like, yeah. I said, Raymond Washington, this and that. And you know how, you know, what was his whole focus on starting this organization that he started. Mm. I'm like, yeah, you're right, because I don't think he didn't intend it to be the way it is today. Of course not. But here it is, a teenager starting a movement like that. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. So we called Big U, Big U came in. We we just start interviewing people like Barefoot Pookie and a few other you OGs. You know it's been some, I'm gonna keep, I gotta speak on, on behalf of all the, the uh, G's on the east side. You know it's been somewhat of a feeling that there's not been more inclusion of the East Side G's in that project. Well, could you understand why they well, would feel that way? I can understand that, but then they can speak out and talk to them. They could talk to Big U. They could talk to whoever I think they somebody, need to talk to. You know, the one person I think was speaking on the subject to Big U, Doc mm -hmm. Thong, and then well, that Doc, happened. So he went to jail. But yeah, Doc so, Thong, my homie. No, I was, we all homies. That, no, no, Doc Thong, is, I know him. I was so in the yes, module with Doc Thong. So, the homie Doc, but yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. my partner. You know I know y'all from that generation where y'all know. You, did you know my G homie, Run Run? King Ron Ron? No, I didn't. But y'all have similar reputations. Yeah, yeah. Did you, you knew one of the Ron Rons from a, 
Uh, I think I ran into the, the little one Lil that Ron was in the county. Shout yeah, out to Lil Ron Ron. Yeah. yeah, on the set. Now, he I, from the nine block. He from my street. And yeah. I know the uh, the young one that I'll be talking to. Young. The one that's still down. No, the one is he out. He out. Yeah. Not. It must be Baby Ron Trina. He living out. I don't know. I think nine I, seven. Yeah. Yeah. The only Ron Ron from nine seven is that I know that's out is Baby Ron Ron. Yeah. Well, Lil Ron Ron, the, the one that look like he white. No, it's another one. Just yeah, a young he's younger one. Younger than him. Yeah, that's Baby Ron Ron. Right? Yeah. He's staying Vegas though. Okay, well, we'll, I'll be talking to him. I think it's him. Online? No, I'll be talking on the phone. phone. We'll figure it out. Yeah, Uh so, uh, yeah, I mean, people couldn't, we got a lot of people that that was there from the beginning. We talking about that was there when they was doing it. We we, we interviewed these people, and I know a lot of homies from the east side was upset, but, bro, you got to speak out. Is it done already? Is it room for more inclusion? Well, with all the interviews, but it's always room for inclusion. It's always room for. I want to make an appeal on behalf of the homies that we can get any type of inclusion available. No yeah, press, no yeah. pressure. Yeah, just I if can, I could talk to Kenya and we can do it because right now our whole focus is trying to get someone to you know they on strike right now in Hollywood. Yeah, the writers. So, but right. we we sell. We trying to we trying to pitch our it's, our movie again, right now. Once again, it's the guy that might be able to help us facilitate some of that. Yeah. We gonna put some pressure on him, yeah. man. Yeah, because we, we we just pitching. What about Psycho Mike, OG Eastside? I don't know if y'all heard the question fed, but uh, Psycho Mike. Where you from? Eastside Oh, you talking oh, about, uh, what's just, his real name? Mike? Five book, he's fat? Well, he from where would it turn into the set? No, I just said Eastside Rip. I know, uh, in the I, I 70s, know a 60s, Psycho Mike. Well, that's, I know a Psycho Mike that was, that ran with Rami Sayed, but he claimed 60s though. Oh, okay. Mm. And his name is, he a Muslim. Okay. That's a Psycho Mike I know. I don't know no other cycle, Mike, but I think I know you talking about. That's my homeboy. I'll be talking to him too, but I mean, like I said, people got to speak up, man. I mean, I don't know a lot of the cats. They, I mean, they probably don't know me to come talk to me or whatever, but I mean. I think I hollered at Big U about it one time. He said something similar, like they got at me. I just did my part. Like he wasn't really just proactive and going recruit and including people got at him and he added to the project what he had and they were just satisfied with that and that makes sense because they act like Raymond ain't never been on the west side hanging out but yeah he was in my neighborhood so, he was so, at my Ram- so Tookie ain't more the, of the west side yeah I think Tookie and Barefoot Pookie and um they had the west side but Raymond was on the west side I, I, I he, can imagine he's he been to my house and everything the man listen man when they grew up I'm on, not gonna never debate when, or when, argue with you on no facts. When they grew up on, <laughs> 70, right on 76, mm-hmm. I used to sleep in the same bed with him. When my daddy was in the military or, and when I'm at my grandmother's house, I slept in the same bed with that dude, Raymond. You know why I could relate to that so much? Because my brother's big spider and his son is tiny spider. And when tiny spider was born, my brother was locked up. And he was really my son before he was, I did that, wiped his ass. He, so I feel you, yeah, and, go ahead. And you know what? Out of all the family members, me, Reggie, all the boys, like me, Reggie, Don Don, Lil Durai. Lil Durai was, I think, was born with Reggie when Raymond got killed, I think. Lil Durai's Michael kids. White, that's the same? Nuh-uh. Okay. Just me and Reggie saw. Okay, all right. Only ones that really knew Raymond was me and Reggie. Okay, Big Reggie, not my no, cousin. No, no, my cousin. Oh, my cousin, the one, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. he knew Raymond. He knew Raymond Washington? Yes. I love you, cuz, on the set, that's hard. Yeah, Reggie knew him, me and Reggie. Because everybody else was young, they was babies. So this is what I, I want to tell the world right now. You hear the reputation of Raymond Washington. The nigga I'm learning that knew Raymond Washington was my big cousin with an attitude, I don't give a fuck, that you don't understand. It's like some of the, I see where I get it from, cuz, there's no way. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm learning something about myself because yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was like kind of like bred through Reggie in energy aggressiveness. Yeah. And I didn't know he was getting that from Raymond Washington. Go ahead, because that's yeah, deep to yeah, me. Yeah, man. Oh, Reggie, crap. Reggie knew him. Reggie and me and Reggie, like the only really ones that really actually had interaction with him. You know what I'm saying? He done been to my house. Him and my mother was tight. You know what I'm saying? He looked. Wanda, too. Oh, my mama, yeah, my mama. I love Auntie Wanda. Auntie Wanda. Wanda knew him. I can imagine because yeah, I because Reggie was an asshole. Could no yeah. no grown man couldn't tell a young man nothing man, from a young Wanda, age. Man, Wanda used to be on Reggie's head. On his head. That's the only person man, that can give him hell. Wanda would cuss Reggie ass <laughs> out, man, and get on him. On God, but man. at 13, 14, grown men couldn't deal with Reggie. No. On God. Well, you know, me and Reggie used to slap box. And See, all that's what would happen. That's if if yeah. you would. That's like my daddy, big time, because on my mama, if you ask my kids, my women, my mama, I got big hands, right? 
But my daddy to this day, he like 74. When he grabbed my hand, I feel like I'm nine years old to this day. So when he get to doing this, even when I used to try to slap box, I mean, um, slap box with my daddy, he used to do like this and say, man, I ain't never knocked nobody out with my hand open. And tap, I'm talking about them big ass hands. So, and even when he six, four, three something, when he get to intimidating you, when you step out the streets, you know how hard it is for a nigga to intimidate you? Cause it'd be hard. So if you was the nigga roughing Reggie up, I can imagine why he was like that. And then guess who was roughing me up? Reggie. Yeah, well, Reggie, Reggie, we get each other. Reggie could fight. Oh Reggie, God, Reggie he could fight. fight. So and he, he don't can... give up. And he gon' if it's problems and it's time to discuss whether we're gonna fight or squash it, he quicker to fight than squash it. Yeah, because he ain't no back you know, then. Back he's, then. A, he's a type of person that really can't express himself. There without you go. Being he gonna get he gonna get and it's on, just yeah. like Stacy. Yeah. On God. Yeah, so on God. So we're right with the situation with the Raymond Project. I just feel like if 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 a people if people have something to say about it, bro, talk to the right people. You I'm sure my big them. homie Kiko for yeah. me, love mate. As one the, person I can speak on, he would love to contribute something to that project. Man, I mean, he may he may can. That's the, that's the homie I met him. You familiar with Yeah, I yeah, met that's him. That's my local. Uh, uh, he can talk to Kenya. He can talk to Draws. He can. I mean, people that's that's really involved in the in the in the in, that shit. in the movie. You know what okay. I'm saying? So it's gonna be a good movie, man. I could imagine, I and I know the world is waiting movie. on anticipating yeah. it, man. That's hard. We've been doing it for three and a half, four years, man. So I got a I got a lyric that kind of like just describing what things are going on right now. It's me and the homie Piper from Gray Street. We got a song called "I Choose You." And they just talk about how the whole shit in the last line is. It's like, I'm just watching while Raymond Washington turn over, turn over in his grave, just based on the way things is going on. I'm gonna sing you the song so you can get hear the whole context and how you see why I ended up at that line though. Lil Raymond's birthday was just the other day. That's that's the book right there. My father in so that, that book. That's your camera. That that's directly in your face. That one you can show the yeah, camera. It's the book right here. It's the first. What's yeah. your father's name? That's in the book. Ronnie Joe. That's yeah, hard. Book. Well, like you little father. Ronnie. Yeah, I'm little Ronnie. Big yeah. Ronnie from the '60s, but little Ronnie in your family to your daddy. Yeah, I'm Ronnie Junior, man. That's what it do, Kyle. Yeah, this, Ron this Reezy. Is a picture of my father in here. Where my dad at, man? Where my pops at? Let me show you a picture of pops. It's a family picture too. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna send it to you to my phone. To that's yours. Right. Good looking. Shout out to Uncle Steve too from oh, Cuz Side of the Bloodline. Cuz yeah. some of my first cryptic uh, influence was from Uncle Steve. He used to always tell us, "Atlantic, don't panic." And yeah. we, we told us, "Oh, he used to yeah." yeah. Shout out to Uncle Steve, Cuz. I went to Easy E House. He took us to Easy E House. He just showed me Easy E House so many back in the day. He used to show us Easy E House on the set. Yeah, he took us to Easy E House, man. Back in Easy the day, Mama man. House, and yep. I met I met their sister. Like everybody knew him. Yep. I met the sister and everything. Man. Back then, he used to love to show us that, Cuz. Steve, the type of uncle, when we was like in high school, he'd take us out to like the beach or something late night. We'd get to kick it, and then on the way home. This is my grandmother right here. That's the, that's right here. Bless her soul. That's my grandmother. That's she a Washington? No, nah, she a she a Samuel. Samuel. Yeah, she a And this my uncle Derrod. But that's they in the, the book. They in the book. That's deep. That's the that's, and then there go Reggie right there, Big Reg. That's Reggie Daddy. That's hard because his son was like. One of the men that the young boys that roughed my, me up. This yeah. my this my father. That's Raymond. That's Donald Ray. That's Reggie. That's at Duraz's wedding on uh, seventy nine, right before he got killed. It, do you think it'd be hard for the editor to uh, mm -hmm. insert them photos when this shit finally hit? Mm -hmm. This right. is this is Big Reggie and Wanda going to see Man, Raymond you, and Wanda. Tracy when they was going to see him in Tracy That's prison. Crazy. Uh... AC Clarence, look, April, look, Lester, Reggie, look, Jermaine yeah. Crawford, look. All that, and there's Pops right there with Big Teresa, Reggie. Look at all that. Betty, Big Crawford, look, mm -hmm. Reggie, Big Clarence, look, that's hard, cuz. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and history, it's, cuz. It's history. In the back of the book, there go Pops right there, too. That was before he got killed, though, bro. That's hard. Through, through y'all side of the family, um, growing up, claiming cousins, from marriages and all that. I got cousins from <clears throat> not the neighborhood Piru that I was raised with as they cousin. And by the time we got to be adolescents and realized we weren't really cousins the way our parents was raised, we still rock that shit to this day. Mm -hmm. I got, and then through marriage, I got people that I grew up with so young from Brams mm -hmm. and we still push like mob to this day. Um, I say that to say, damn, what the fuck was I finna say? Cause that shit slipped my mind. Um, oh, um, 
I don't know. I got to reset. Throw me somewhere. That's <laughs> why throw me a pass. Cause I just <laughs> fucked up on the set. We've been flowing. Cause I had a good one though. It was going to be a good transition, but I just drew a blank. Uh, help me out. Back to the book. <laughs> So how long is that book? When is that book written? Who wrote it? Well, I was in jail when that book was written. It was a uh, guy. What's the title of it again? I am Raymond Washington. Oh, you know what? I swear to God, cause when Kiko got out from doing this last twenty, and we finally he, he had me pull up on him when he was politicking, he gave me some homework. He gave me that book to read on the set. Yeah, so that, I mean that book damn near came in the top five. A couple times, but they got juked out that book, man. They, I think my brother Cliff, they did a a a, a, a verbal agreement. They shook hands. They mm. never signed anything. You know what I'm saying? And mm. him and Derod and my grandmother and them kind of got juked, man. We have it happens to us so often as a people. I'm not surprised to find that out. Um, um, damn, it was another transition just skipped my mind. I had cause that's crazy. I had a perfect one for that. One. My memoirs, I do. I, I got very many in there on my memoirs that I got my book. And uh, I was interested in developing a project called 4800. Mm -hmm. And my my concept for the vision was getting people from your time frame in life, mine, and just give a concept of. I know the, the module went beyond 4800. Like like you was saying, twenty seven. Then it went to Linwood for my generation. Um, I never really made it to the module. I was on Fish Row, and I don't know why. After OSJ had me evaluate, they sent me back to the main line. But but I know about the environment. Big U got a cold. Um, I would love for him to be a part of it because I've seen documentaries on his presence in the module. I got a couple of my G homies already signed on to participate. I want to invite you. It's just gonna be titled forty eight hundred. Give the viewers, the listeners, an idea. Uh, what the concept, the idea of the module, not just 4800 in particular, but what that started and what that was like up in that thing. That's the crypt module well, for those that well, don't might not know in the LA County Jail. I would say that when I got there, 4800, they, got, they closed 48 down and they opened 2700 mm -hmm. and 2123. Okay. So the two man I, sales? Well, they were one man one sales. One man sales. So, uh, a lot of stuff was going on in 4800, I guess, you know, a lot of little mess that caused a lot of strife and beefs up in there that I, I'm not going to speak on it, but mm -hmm. a lot of shit happened. A lot of books are written. If y'all yeah, yeah. want to do your history, go check out yeah. Master Cody book for one. And whether everything or not in there is true, it'll give you a basis yeah. of what 4800 was like. Yeah. So when we opened up 2700, well, they opened up 2700, I got there, the 60s, the UGs, the 111s. And the nine O's had Charlie Rowe. The Coasters had Abel and Baker Rowe. Coasters, A7 Gangsters, a couple of niggas from PJ Watts. They had Abel and Baker. Denver Rowe was the Harlems, the Raymonds. They had uh, Denver Rowe. You know what I'm saying? How old was you, girl? I was 18. And um, when I got there, uh, just to name a few dudes, Little Banker T, my homie Lil Shyster, my homie Creep, homie Baby C Dog, Big C Dog, Lil Petey Wack, uh, Earl Dog, uh, Mumbles from UG, D Dog, now Mumbles from 111, D Dog from 111, Droopy from UG, Evil from UG, Lil Wack from UG, Kikaboo, rest in peace from UG. We was all on Charlie Rock. Mommy Lil Kimbone came through there, Baby Wino. We was all on uh we was all on uh Charlie Row. Now on you know if you push that side button it'll go quiet. Okay. Yeah. But on um Abel Row, you had Snake from the Deuce, Chums from the Deuce, you had Duck, you had uh A Ball, you had uh T C from the Deuce, you had uh you had uh who else was down there from the TC didn't have no dreads back then. He uh -huh. didn't cut them off now. Yeah. Uh -huh. And who else was down there from the from the six pack? Uh right my, nigga, my nigga Pee Wee from Six Six. The other homie that, the, the other homie uh from uh six six uh six eight. He had like Not Wolf. No. Nah. We had Wolf. Wolf, Wolf was, was down there. Like Wood to the, no, Wolf was at Calipac. He yeah, one of the Wolf. ones that did that shit. So Doc Thon. Doc Thon was down See, there. The homie Doc. Uh, six nine seven. And on the other side, you had Blue, T-Bone from 7-6, Blue from 7-6, Itchy Rap from 7-6, G-Man yes. from 11-8, Moon from 1st Street. Damn. You had, uh, 
Who else? Rick Rock from the Q. He just got out. Shout out to Shout Rick. Shout out to my homie Rick Rock on yeah, the set. Cause uh, 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 Duck from uh, Q102. Uh, Jinx from 97. Shout out to Big Jinx. That's uh, my homie uh, too. Uh, Who was from 89 up in there? I, I can't leave out the 89s. Yeah, <laughs> that motherfucker, man. Hot Ice came Evil through mind. there. Hot Ice was there. That's Hot Ice right. came through there. Uh, damn. Raw Ice from 69. Uh, Baby Ice Man from 69. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, in the, in the 30s was like Dwayne Capers, Lil Mel, Rest in Peace, uh, We Dogs, so Maniac. With all, all those groups. allies in one place, what made it such a, a terrifying place to be? If everybody, if it's all that many homies, why is it such a well, scary place to be? Because if you come in there being a buster, you're going to get treated like that. Niggas are getting tied up, getting shower Fart shoes. Sack, shower shoes. Getting a, getting a, um, they were doing, putting a bomb in, in, in pillowcases and throwing the shit on the nigga head or whatever. They done did all that, man. I mean, the module, I mean, it ain't, it ain't as worse as it was in 4800, but right. I could tell you 2700, when you, go, when you go to court, you go in shackle. You go in cell 19 or going to that hard cell and you go in there with the Hoovers or the H-Ray gangsters and all these other little different hoods we don't get along with mm -hmm. and you don't have a cuff key to get out, your ass in trouble. If you're going to a visit, and you have going handcuffed, and you ain't got a cuff key to come out of there, and them dudes come out, you in trouble. I just seen the, on the, on the, um, when it was on with the essays, I just seen on our side when we was able to come out the cuffs, and I had been on the bus, the court bus, when they was able to come out. So yeah. I know how the advantage yeah. is. It's some footage yeah. right now with King Von in the tank, and a lot of people calling him a coward because he came out the cuffs and got on his got on his eye, but they don't know. That's how it go. That's We're going to take go. every advantage we can get on my mama mama. So, and then if you go in cell 19 coming from court and you're the only hooster or wherever you're from in that in that cell 19 and, and a pack of Hoovers and a pack of A-Trays come in there or whoever school yours or whatever, that's your ass. You better, you better, you got to <laughs> stay down. Because if it's down. the other way around, if it's a pack of neighborhoods and a pack of homies up in there. Speaking and, on schoolyards. Can I bring you to a legendary time in history what? and just name something and get your perspective on it? What's that? World on Wheels. What about it? I'm just saying, you know, throughout our history, we just know that it was like kind of like a transfer of influence up there at one point without, you know, disrespecting nobody. A lot of people sharing, you know, historical events, the way things took place. You want to, if you don't mind, get an uh, audience an idea of what that, what I'm talking about. Well, World on Wheels was like a day where all the homies, my homies, we used to go up to World on Wheels at about a certain time. We do the 10 to 2 session, so it would be a number six O's, uh, 30s, 9 O's, uh, uh, a couple of niggas homies. from PJ's, Watts, East Coasts, gear gangs that come up there. Uh, they'll come up in there, and we school schoolyards. Only person from schoolyard I seen come up in that motherfucker, man, and try to make some noise was that nigga Blue. Mm. Blue was the only one. But Bible the, Crip. Yeah, but the only one, I mean, I, I'm not taking nothing away from the schoolyard. Of course not. I'm not taking nothing away from none of them, but I just know when I was going up there, we never really ran into no schoolyards going up there. But at one point, that was understand, there. understood as a they pocket, and then at one, and then at, at time change, it was had changed. Yeah. Was there a, 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 a incident that marked that shift or was it just a time change? No? I think it was just uh, we was beefing with them but we wasn't, it wasn't a serious beef. I don't think it was a serious beef to right. where it led to nothing serious because right. I had a couple of homies that lived in that hood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So Same button. Oh, that ain't me. Close yeah. Me. Yeah so as far as that go for as long as I've been going to Swirl on Wheels, I've been O's. I'm just O's and Coasters, Roller O's Coasters. And, coasters. and PJ Watts. You had a couple niggas from Grape used to come up there. Gear Gangs would come up there. You it's know back cracking now, ain't it? After it's no, been I shut think, down. I think it shut down. Again? Yeah. Okay. They so. bought it. I think Nick oh, they they opened it. Then he got killed, I, I guess. I can see the vision. Yeah, I think they closed it back up. I want the world that's listening to know that's not local. There's no skating in LA for blacks. Water on Wheels was a staple. It's been shut down for a long time. They tried to do skate land in, in the in the Piru area of Compton. It didn't work. Shortly lived used to be the Ditto Center, Dudo Center. Cerritos was a staple of the suburbs, whites, Asians, until the niggas took over. It's been shut down. Niggas do not, are not allowed to skate in 
Southern California, my line. And order if you a black person like the skate now, you got to get on the freeway and go forty five minutes somewhere. They got some little fly spots. Van Nuys got one. See? Van Nuys <laughs> had got one. I went to that one and um. For some reason, it shut down, but they got some in Anaheim, like Orange County, that they go to now. 45 minutes, either between 20 to minutes to an hour if you want to go have some safe skating. Yeah. When we used to have it 10 to 15 minutes in any direction, but for some reason, the lax, I don't know, we can't, what the fuck is wrong with us out here? You know what I love when I go to other places like D.C., Atlanta, Miami, to see I could be in a place with 2,000 blacks and they could party for eight, nine hours off all kind of drugs and shit don't go down, bro. What is it about us out here why we go to the functions knowing it might be ops there. We know it's time to behave. Why through the years do you think it's been so historically that we cannot get it to where we come here for this and then we go and leave everything else? What is it about our energy that's so different than everybody else's? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but what I will say is I think it's different today because a lot of people that we deem are ops at one point are now more of someone we get along with now and we can we can coexist with each other out of respect and some of it is out of love. Because Mentioning, on that subject, you mentioned um, Skip Townsend earlier. Can you mind expounding on your relationship with him? Because he's a staple out here on the internet has a history of being fully found, uh, founded and official, but transitioned to positivity. Y'all working to collab on anything? Well, man, man, Skip got me in the local 11. He tried to get me in, him and Big John from uh, Villain, tried to get me in to work for local 11 for electrician. Okay. So I took the test, did everything I had to do, passed, but my oral test, as far as my interview, wasn't that high. Okay. So anybody that scored higher than me, it's it bumps me alive. down. Yeah, it bumps me down. So I've been on the list for for a few years, just you know waiting. But Skip Towers is the type of person that try to bring people Scoop to the table. Scoop, yeah, man, that's my boy. Big like, bro. I like his energy, man. And he go. He bought me Munchie B from Inglewood Family, mm. Big Bandit from Inglewood Family, Tiny Nuff from CPF, my homie Big Pretty Boy. We all came to the cave. We ate. You know, I did a podcast with us, uh, Skip, with Munchie B. I did a podcast with my cousin Ray Ray Shana. Uh, Ray Ray, Richard Raymond's daughter. Mm. Uh, I mean, he just, I think, Skip, he's hes in the right direction, man. He's I doing agree. what he need to do. And he's all, and he's, every, he was at Money Mike funeral. Is that right? So I was like. That was a couple weeks ago? No, like last year. Oh, last year, okay. Like year, yeah, about, yeah, something like last okay. year. He was there. Like, at your the homie funeral. Only blood there, but coexisted like he was one of us. Oh, you should. And, and, and I like that because. That lets you know, man, I don't care about that color. Right. I'm what it's black. supposed to be about anyway. It's supposed to you be. mentioned the name, Munchie B. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to get controversial. I don't know what your thoughts are going to be, but it's a story floating around on the internet right now of him getting violated by some, I think, of your homies or some homies from 40s. And he supposed to got so knocked out and disrespected. Have you ever heard of that story? I heard of it, but I don't believe it. I don't I'm believe it happened like said. that. I don't believe it, man, because... You know much you do? I wouldn't even... Listen, man. I wouldn't even broadcast no shit like that about somebody being obnoxious to do it out and play. That's I wouldn't even, even. I wouldn't even do that, man. That To me, that's... That's, that's out of my, pocket. That's, that's, that's unnatural, it's, bro. It's, 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 un, it's, it's undesirable what's going yeah. through that would be. Yeah. Once a man is unconscious, how do you hold him accountable for anything that took place? So, I, I don't... So, like... I mean, I can understand all in war if you do that and that's, but at least I respect your perspective and without me knowing for a fact that happened, I would rather believe it didn't. Because outside of that, I'm, I, I got a son from Inglewood families. So I don't broadcast it. I, so I just, I would have, and I know a lot about the culture, the side, got a lot of allies, just friends, family, you know how this shit go out here. But I'm glad with everything else I know about him that it's somebody I respect that can make me believe that that man, shit ain't listen, true. Man, that dude, that little dude, is a respected guy. I respect I, I his push. It. I respect his push. I respect well, you know, he got in he got his section. He they look up to him. It to be so it. young, they look up to him. You know what I'm saying? And 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 people don't know he's a good dude. He got a good heart, man. He just believe in what he believe in. He pushed the way he pushed, like he's supposed to. Mm -hmm. He's a blood. Mm -hmm. He's mingled with family. And so he pushed the respect and salute yeah. that. So he he pushed the way he pushed. And he's he been should. pushing like just like I pushed the way I pushed. You pushed the way you pushed right. growing up. Right. Your views was what it was. 
what it was. If you didn't like six O's at the time, that was your views. Right. I don't like six O's. Or I don't that. like Inglewood families. Or I don't like swans or whatever right. it may be. But at the end of the day, it's about it's about respect. Correct. So I I, I treat everybody on the individual ba- uh, respect on the individual basis. Not Likewise. because you familiar with family. I don't like you because I, but I like your push. You your your, your right. individuality is cool. Right. And and that's what I'm. And what people don't realize when they see red, blue, and they see the coexistence, co mingling, they don't realize no matter how active you were, we was forced into a system to where after the activity, it was time to learn each other man to man, and it happens and. You got a culture of blended relationships. But guess where you learn it from? That's where you learn that from. Mm-hmm. Prison. Prison. That's what I was speaking of. Exactly. Because when I came to prison, Me too. I was an old. I went to Folsom County State Jail, prison, actually. Bro. I went to I went to county. They said tripping. But at the time when I first was coming through the town, um, county was when we was first really being outnumbered to the point where. Mm-hmm. It was us against them, and we we with the enemies. Yeah. And it's, yeah, so I yeah. feel you though. You from a generation earlier, but yeah. go ahead, but, Sh- please share. But when I got to Folsom, you know who looked out for me, man? I know you from the surprises. Some A Trey gangsters, man. I believe it. That's what people don't get. My nigga, my nigga Trey Ball. Uh, who else looked out for me? It was Trey Ball, and a few other cats in the building. That was they was they on the crypt thing. They ain't. Looking at me the being last 60s name, or right. they, on, they on the crypt time. But them dudes looked out for me before before my homies can get to me and look out for me. Them dudes looked out for me, man. And that's when I seen like, damn, man, the enemy. These niggas is enemies, man. I, I took it like, okay, good looking out. But then my mom like, damn, am I supposed to take this for them? Because they enemies. But then when I seen my homeboy Moody and all them, they was like, oh, them the homies, man, Ooh. and this and that. So I was like, okay. So when I get to learn people that's... I consider ops. They not my ops, bro. That's what I learned my too. My thing is, if I'm cool with you, I'm cool with you. I, I, I'm not gonna go against you. If I if I see you on the streets, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even try to transgress against you. You my, you you cool with me? Right. I don't know how they may feel about me. Right. Until you violate that though, yeah. I'm extend that respect. Yeah, but and I, I'm on the same I'm shit. I'm extend it. I'm extend it as much as I can. Like let you know, I'm not on that, bro. I'm not on that. So. You know, but I'm hoping you're not on that with me. Exactly. Because, you know, because I'm showing you a genuine side of myself that say, if you cool with me, I'm cool with you. Now, now as far as your whole hood go, I can't. Right. I don't have a problem. I'm saying, I don't hate them. Always as much as they accept me, yeah. Yeah, I don't hate them. Like A-Trey Gangs, I don't hate them. Right. I don't hate them at all. I'm learning. That's how I I feel about the Swans, Main Streets, the Gray Streets, and all. The whole thing is always, I was in love with the activity. And had my mama purchase property or pay, uh, otherwise, or my father, I would be full fledged that area. It was never about the actual. It was about me being fully engaged in the activity. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all it was. Yeah. So when I say that, it's just like I don't, I don't hate nobody because I went to war with niggas from Hoover, with niggas from A Trey, with niggas Likewise. from Eaglewood, with niggas from wherever they was I from gotta, that didn't get along with I, us, bro. I don't, I don't know this nigga name, but in the nineties, homie. I don't know if you ever beat that case. If you, I, I know you was up against it, but it was a nigga from Bishop or Pueblo, from Pueblos. I got into a dorm. I went to a dorm with a, with my uh, back stitched up or gauze up, bandaged up because I had just got out of riot. And because the police had um, raided the dorm in Supermax the day before, and then the very next day we got into a, a riot and the only people that got stabbed in the riot was us. And when they came to toss it up and all that, when they had us sitting down, that's all we was talking about. Like, I thought y'all tossed this motherfucker up for the weapons. How they got weapons and we don't? This was like everybody arguing. Long story short, like I told you, when I started coming through that thing is when the numbers were so stupid. We was just having to be back to the wall, stand stumped down. So shout out to Slug from uh, Treetop because my nigga Slug from Treetop, he the one kicked the ride. He the one fired first. Slug is out, though. He out. I spoke to him. Slug. Shout out to Lil Boodaroo from Treetop. Yeah. I mean, Big Boodaroo. That's uh, 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 YG Big Homie. He Lil Boodaroo. But Big Boodaroo put me in touch with Slug. And after 20 almost years, I remember a nigga from, because when the ride kicked off, I remember me and a nigga from Duroc, shout out to the old nigga from Duroc was playing chess. We seen the, the peoples and our peoples mounting up. I remember sliding on my Cortez, getting to the, I didn't even know Slug, but he was like, like we, we had to put our back against the wall. I remember after it was all said and done, it was 18 against 44. We was, so I remember uh, Slug was at this end, the numbers was building up. I remember telling Slug was doing all the talking. I'm like, hey homie, if, it's enough talking, homie. If we ain't gonna do nothing, we need to let the shit go. Really thinking, we finna just disperse. The little nigga slug get off, bam. So it go down. But that's when I say, only blacks got poked. They came and raided for knives the day before. Long story short, 
they, in the write-up, they called us victims. Bam. So the, 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 the essay that was involved, they went to the hole, and they, they just separated the blacks that was involved to different units. Because I was wounded, they sent me to the medical unit in Supermax, the little smaller dorms. I remember because me first getting in there telling all the blacks what happened while I got this shit on my back. We just got into it with the Mexicans. Woo, woo, woo. But I kept telling them, I'm a young nigga putting this on myself. I ain't going to lie. Really thinking it's never going to happen. But I'm on one. I'm mad. I'm telling all the blacks, if any of the Mexicans that was involved, come in here. I'm telling you I'm flight. This shit happened on the way. I'm not thinking it's going to happen because I swear to God, two weeks later, I guess they got two weeks in the hole. It was almost a, a tweaks exactly. You know how the fish line come and how the little pods is. They had a line. The police going to put like two in this unit, two in that one. I'm going to put my motherfucking food in the trash. I look up. The main motherfucker the shit started over and the next few people in line is the people from the riot. But it's still opportunity for them to go in either pod. So I remember going back telling like the blacks that was in there was like, damn, look, homie. I've been saying this shit for two weeks. Ain't me. I can't I can't go back on what I've been saying. I'm like, look, that's some of the people's right there. I'm like, I'm telling y'all what I've been telling y'all. It's finna go down if they come in here. Wait, God, the devil, whoever make it happen, the main fool and another fool come right in my dorm. So now I'm gonna talk myself into some shit. But I just wanna say this on that subject matter. It was a nigga from Pueblos. And I, I, like, I talk myself to all this. I, even, I, I used to I would salute my peoples because even the non affiliate older dudes, when I tell them, they was like, We with you, youngster. They was shooting up, they was putting their shoes on. So the, the main fool, the shit started over. You know how you walk up that, uh, the stairs to the top tier? He, his first bunk was right there. He was like making his bed. All his homies were standing around him. And he was telling him how happy he is to be out the hole, talking about what happened two weeks ago, not knowing it's nobody from that incident in the dorm, not knowing I've been in here two weeks saying if one of these. So he just fresh out the hole thinking, what up, homies? Da, da, da. And here I could, and then the nigga, I was I'm telling all the blacks what I'm gonna do, they left it on me. So I'm telling the nigga, I'm like, oh, I'm finna go up there and do my stuff. I was finna go upstairs by myself. I said, all oh, this to say this, a nigga from Pueblo was like, hey, homie, you want me to go with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, yeah, homie. And he went with me. I still did my stuff, got off first. It, it cracked, everything went how it went. But I just say all that to say that when the Damu at the last minute was like, hey, homie, you want me to go with you? Man, crip blood, done that shit didn't matter, homie. So I, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, because, you know, that's what it's about. It's about the individual, man. We don't. I don't care about that shit, man. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't care about where you from no more, man. That shit don't really mean nothing, man. It's about where you at today. And let me say this, too. On a deeper level, and I know when it's on, it's on with whoever, but that even transcends to the Mexican homies. Yeah. I just want y'all to know the controversy. Y'all see with my name, Mr. Criminal, all that bullshit. I'm not finna bow down, break down. I'm not finna let nobody challenge me about the way I speak English if I even may have made a mistake when the whole subject matter was about speaking English and all that. Everybody know my heart, what no offense intended, what no disrespect intended. I was sitting there talking to my South Side of partner about a cordial, friendly conversation. He asked me about my perspective on why I thought a certain energy of collaboration didn't happen more often and I assumed that maybe hey maybe this is why I'm not saying that's exactly why I could be wrong I might be wrong by what I may think but I never am wrong about what I actually thought so I don't give a fuck about where nobody from what you represent as human beings when we get caught up in certain things of course we know groups get involved but outside of that I treat every man as a man and respect every man as a respect Regardless, man, my, 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 my best friend is a Mexican man. My best friend is my homeboy Smurf. In my the best friend name is Puto. So I'm sorry. This how say, backwards so. my shit is. You yeah. know, every time I get around a Mexican and introduce them, they be like, "Hey, you know what that mean, right?" But his grandmama is full Mexican. His mama mm -hmm. half Mexican, mm -hmm. and he looked like he could be mixed. He from grape. He a nigga. Yeah. But because of that, when we first started get becoming dogs, when I talk shit to him, I'm like, "Man, shut up, you fucking Puto." And because of us becoming best friends, that stuck with everybody around hearing me call him that. And that's his name to this day. Yeah. Only he from Baby Low, cuz they call him Tarzan, Rare Rest, and Randy. He had three nicknames when I met him. Guess what everybody call him now? Poop Puto. Dog. Love you, Low. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, my best friend is Smurf. You know what I'm saying? One of my, one of my best friends is Smurf. I got a, got that name tattooed right here. Right around Waco Smurf. That's hard. That's one of my first tattoos I got. Me, Waco, and Smurf. R That's hard. The tattoo me and Puto got in common is this G unit shit. Yeah. Oh, my mama, yeah, so I don't care about that stuff, man. I don't care about a nigga being a blood. I don't care about none of that shit. None of man, that. Because 
Well, if I'm cool with you, I'm cool with you. Oh, I don't care where you from. Likewise. Man. And I try to I try to express that to everybody. Just like in my um I got a non profit. Yes, and, blow that up. Um, yeah, it's called Step Towards Change. And it's really talk, talk uh speaking about juvenile reform. That's what we work on now. Mm. That's what, what I'm, that's my whole focus right now. The juvenile reform. So uh I go up to Biscaloo. Is that right? I went up there to talk to the kids. To, and, and Can you help give me clearance to do something similar? Because I'm very interested yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, all right. And um, I'm finna go into juvenile halls. I'm finna, I just put in my application through uh, Baby Spike for Matrix Gangsters. Okay. That's my boy. Salute to the homie, man. Yeah, Move. Salute to Baby Spike, yeah, man. I'm trying to be a part of that. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, um, I talked to the kid, 90% of them was Hispanic, though. You know, as blacks opening our mouths to the public, period, with this gangster shit, our support and listeners, 90% of them typically are Hispanic. Yeah. So that's another reason why I can't believe that anybody intelligent in the public would allow themselves to be confused by the Mr. Criminal uh, confusion. But I'm just not finna bow down and do nothing similar to what Tiger did because I didn't do nothing to offend nobody. I was talking to my Serena homies, and I still got a bunch of them, and we all laugh at those that call themselves mad at me. Shout out to Sell Music. Mm. Anybody else who don't like it, fuck what you feeling on my mama, mama. This is called facts over feelings. I've been pushing facts over feelings way before that shit started. So I have to consider the facts that's on the table versus who feelings involved, and I ain't tripping on your feelings, but go ahead. Yeah, you know, it's just, that's what it is, man. And, 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 you know, when we speak on individuals, like we spoke on the Thundercat, well, Cowboy and uh, Brick Baby and 600, you know, the, all three of my, my homies, and I'm no bigger than they, I'm not, I'm not bigger than them, they not bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? But I just feel like Cowboy need to, uh, I mean, whatever they got going on, they need to deal with. I haven't spoke to him, like I said, I haven't spoke to the guy. Um, it is what it is. It is what it but, is. But uh, as far as 600 going, how he may feel, I mean, he feel the way he feel. I just feel like he could have been done a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? I, because a lot of the homies is mad. A lot of the homies feel like it could have been done different. You don't have to do nothing, exploit nobody and making the hood look bad in they eyes. Correct. And that's my over. Look, I'm from EC. I ain't even thinking the fact that neighborhood, neighborhood, just because, uh, just, you know, we all grew up doing this shit together. You know what it is on the yard, how we roll up, everything. I'd be embarrassed on behalf of the whole of y'all section. Like, come on, cuz. Like, if I speak to the rest of the world of my opinion of the 60s, I don't want nobody I ever spoke highly of the 60s to, to ask me, like, what is happening? Now, I'm embarrassed because if I had to tell the world about our culture out here, y'all like top tier brand name and everybody know that of what we put. So it's like to see that going on. And I feel the same way when my homies involve they self in similar activities, the same way when the Great Streets allowed they last politics to bleed over all these traditional real cultures, even the pie rules. Yeah. They took it to a whole nother level and Compton with this, whoa, just kick back y'all, let's kick back. But shout out to Marv, cause yeah. OG Marv yeah. uh, caught the pie rule, you a fool. Yeah, oh, so, wow, wow, wow. yeah, so you know, like like with them, it's just like like I say, they my, you know, six hundred is my boy. I don't look I don't look no different at him. You know, I I, I question it on why he did it. Why you do that, man? Why, what's wrong with him? You know, what he on type stuff. That's the answer. And and, and if he was in my face, I asked him, man, what you on, bro? What you oh, you saying just on? would you were actually yeah, right, right? What's going on, bro? Why you on the internet with all that? You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do that. But they all feel like they doing the best thing for them, you know what I'm saying? But uh being being part of such a deep gang too, it's kinda hard to manage yeah. every single yeah. body. It don't take my it don't take my respect away from them. That's what I'm saying. It ain't gonna okay. take away the respect that I may have for that person unless you're doing something super stupid. Right. Then well, it's gonna be like, Oh, I'm cool. But I know they're gonna cross paths and they'll see each other. You know what I'm saying? Um I think six hundred just recently um, called itself being a bigger man and accepting an actual organized gloved event and, and, and spoke on that. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I just, I feel the way you feel on certain aspects. Why would I make this clear, bro? Because the world, YouTube. Why would I even want 
a fade or fight someone that I feel is rotten. It don't happen, y'all. Don't think. Why would I do that? Don't let the YouTube commenters who keep saying, oh, or the fake C-Mac dad talking about come beat up a rat. No, nah, you don't. Guess what? Amongst brotherhood of this cripping, this whole G shit out here, we offer fair ones to people that yeah. are honorable. And I'll take a win, lose a draw, yeah. no matter what. But once you step outside of the realms of honorable, now all the power that we possess is against you. You'll never get action at getting a fair one. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about cowboy. I'm uh, just talking about either. in general. In I'm just general. saying that why would like if you on the yard, you think you're gonna get ahead of fate on the yard? Not happening. You think you're gonna. A nigga, you okay? I did that. I, I take that head up, fat. I it's take whatever gonna DP's gonna have. What kind of DP? If you think somebody gonna lets happen? you walk into an area anticipating a head of fate under those circumstances, yeah. don't trust it. Yeah, don't trust it. Don't trust because it. Because I'm telling you, man, I ain't never seen it done. I ain't never seen. I not on no yard. If you if you file. Oh my mama, mama, can I ask I you a question that you're not expecting? What? Who or where did the term Rich Rolling come from? Who made that up? Just be doing. But I'm gonna say the first person I heard. Me, <laughs> me. That was a great question, man. Saying, saying Rich Rolling. Wait, did you have a potential answer in your head? I knew it was six zero. I, I believe. But you had no idea. You thought you was talking to one of them, maybe potential. You might know exactly where. I've heard a few homies say it. I didn't hear mommy Lil Looney rest in peace say it. That's a debate. Yeah, I heard it's a debate. My said like, who made it for death though? I didn't oh, heard. God. I didn't heard a lot of my homie PJ say it. Lil PJ is my. I was on the yard with Lil PJ from Six O. Yeah. Curly haired nigga. Oh, that's Baby PJ. Baby, tell Cuz I said what up. Yeah. Name Marquise or something. No, his name is Mark Good. Mark. Mark. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cuz know the deal. That's the East. That's the uh, homie. Cuz Nightbud. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and a lot of them got a tattooed on them. A lot of them got a tattooed on them. So there's a lot of homies that say. What it. about Grasshopper? You got a homie that's. Yeah, I know Grasshopper. He, he was on the yard with me and PJ too. Yeah, I know Grasshopper. I got two more questions. Then. You know, after that, I'm gonna allow you to speak anything you would like, and then we gonna wrap it up. But I got an artist, um, Do Rock Creek, and I just want to, you know, historically know if anything you got to say about the, the Wardy situation, the clash that the homies went through. Uh, Cause to me, in my mind, to me, that's like one of the farthest distances for us to sustain the war I've ever heard about. That really went down, and it really put them on the map that they was even able to get y'all attention like that. So anything, you don't have to, but I just really wanted to find a way to shout my homie out, do Rock Creek, my artist, because he's been down since the 90s. We was in State Model together, and he haven't been home since, but he's been recording, putting out music, and we rock together. And he, he respect the movement. He loved Nipsey, but he was a part of that energy back then. Well, the only thing I can say is about that is that shit have never happened. That shit was wrong, man, because cause Stone... Had them, had them in the neighborhood at his house and everything, bro. Mm -hmm. So for that to happen, I felt like that was super wrong. But I know some Duroc, some good Duroc. So, Bird was in there with yeah, too Bird, back then. Bird was in there with me, Big Bird and Little Bird. And he didn't even agree with that. Right. So. That's I mean, the nature of a lot of the shit that yeah, we go yeah, through, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like I'm, I, I, I've outgrown it, but. Stone was a was a homie. The Stone was a good homie, man, and that shit, that shit trickled to the penitentiary to where some of them dudes got hurt. Yeah, they did because there wasn't so, enough of them. So the main one got hurt. Mm. But my thing is, as far as that go, I mean, growth, growth. When you growing, man, some things you got to look past. The same thing we've been celebrating this whole time. When I got, remember, I had a blank. That's what I was trying to tie in the um, incident I had with the Santanas when everybody came together and we was able to resolve it. I remember through one of my blackouts, that's what I was trying to talk about. Yeah. Just one last thing I want to mention on some legendary shit. Um, my oldest child, who was actually not my birth child, when I met him, he was two years old and I, had, I didn't have any children. I now have six children and a grandchild. My two oldest children are his sister. Um, he be at San Quentin and he get the opportunity to feed the homie Lil Fee every now and then. Um, and I was uh, incarcerated when Cub fighting this case. Just anything you want to add on the legendary story, speak on highlights, saying Cub a shout out. I just had that irony in my life that not only Cub, but Loco from when I know. Loco, so, yeah, Ken they, Dog, my boy. They up there. Ken like, Dog, my, can, Ken Dog is my, he called me. Can you imagine I was able to have one of them like whispering my son ear while he hitting the tear he don't, before he knew it. So I just, you know, shout out to the homies though, Night Bud. You know, they finna, they finna um, release them dudes to the main line. 
Mm. They finna get released. They finna, like Lil Fee, I think he's getting released to the main line. They releasing all them dudes with death sentences. I guess they signed a law. Mm. So is that is that is is that for us something we appreciate uh, yeah, the governor they, for? I think they. What's his name? Newsom or, or Gaston Newsom? Gaston Newsom. I got out. I got out under Jerry Brown. But, okay. But what the day Gavin Newsom got so sworn the day in, you got sentenced, it was supposedly you weren't supposed to come home. No. Uh, you no. you, you want to highlight expound on that a little bit then? What what took place in order for life is life? I had to take groups. I had to really. Uh, Did you have like a twenty five two or just a straight L? I had fifteen of life. Fifteen of life. But life I remember was, it was a time when my brother was telling me. Um, this nigga's been down with three to life for 30 years. That wasn't, yeah. Five to life. The yeah, first five. it was five to life, then it was seven to life, then they started the 2015 to 20, 27 to life. But when you got life, you got life. You don't yeah. know when you getting out. Wow. But because they have all these groups now, I took a lot of groups, you know, like mm. substance abuse, anger so management. So that shit really ended up mattering when it's time to go see them people. And you have to be able to internalize it to the board. Mm, not like not you. Not just re- talk about not it. Not like you re- rehearsing yeah, and reciting yeah. it. You have to internalize mm. it and you have to walk it. You're like, okay, this is what I'm doing. So in part of, part of that is owning what own they enough. accuse you of. Whether you, you really own, know. You got to own your respons- the, 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 the responsibility. Even if you're yourself. innocent and you're at that point where you got to appeal to them, you have to own it to the point yeah, where they're convinced. You got to own, gotta own your part in it, man. Your lifestyle and even if my lifestyle played a part in this, man. So where does the S and Y yard, this new thing, where does that play into that conversation where it's homies that's trying to come home, being down to dub plus, you know the, what everybody's saying, but you know the process sometime when the points come down, you're trying to get home. Yeah. What, what, you, what would you advise a homie that's been down since the early 90s that's did they dub plus and they got that action and it's time to go to that two yard and it's classified? What what's, What are they supposed to do? Is they supposed to deny it, turn it down or what? Let me say this. Let me say this, man. Because that's a, that's a big old question, right? Them level twos, the level twos that they're doing now is called program facilities now. They still got S and Y yards. Mm-hmm. That's for them S and Y uh, cats that don't want to come to one of them program facilities, they got to sign their status off to get over there. Okay. And a lot of them wouldn't do it. Okay. I went to uh, Donovan from the main line. Mm. So a lot of us from the main line is over there. Then you got these S and Ys or whatever they are. Come mm. over Donovan there. Donovan two yard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they come over there, but it's still split up to where GPs fuck with GPs, S and Y niggas fuck with S and Y. Okay. I'm glad we're here to clarify that. You know that. what I'm saying? And that's just what it was. And Because the the, the, the the average listener allowed the system to create an environment to where a real nigga don't have a chance. And we be judged by the way the white man has set up something that you saying, have no way to avoid. But they saying that you got to coexist with them in order to get out. Right. You got to coexist with them dudes. So if you got to go to a program facility, which is like a CMC is like that. Being like that. It's been that's like that. That's why they were shitting on Suge because he was at CMC when he was at CMC. Yeah, and then you got a lot of hardcore that was... I think Trey D was there too. They, they was at CMC, yeah, but I'm, it, sure. I'm just saying. But though, CMC man. is not what they. No, it's not an S N Y yard. It's not a, or Solano. They a lot of po like. Let me say Solano ain't like that. Solano Solano is like a 50 50 yard too. If you want to be technical, you got a lot of dudes that had that used to be policemen that's incarcerated and all that stuff. Mm. But a lot of these dudes be going S O Y because they be chasing these homosexuals or they be having debts or that would take they, us back to that Chicago yeah, or, conversation. Or they want to, or they don't want to, or they had a move they had to do and he wouldn't do it, so he rolled it up and told or whatever. What about trying to go get somebody that's bad over there? Well, I don't know about that. That's too you too deep in the game if you that deep, yeah, serious. Huh? All that, yeah, I ain't doing. Tell me this. I'm a last question, and I'm gonna let this be a uh, system related. What's your thoughts on North Days and Serenio's squash burying that hatchet and how that implicates? I talked to a few homies, they be like, "Damn, you know how many times we didn't say them." Like, I just feel like you know, but it was inevitable. Do you think that was inevitable? I knew it would happen one day, but when I first came to the pen, they was pushing C14. Wow, Crip 14. And a lot of them were doing that in the pen too. Wow. So they was fuck with Crips. They want they, they, them, them, them North Daniels has a cold structure. And we got to tell y'all this, our people, blood, scripts, they can't hate on a, a, a proper blueprint. We we, we we should we late to the party. It's time to let that shit go, man. Oh, mama, mama, mama. They've been for a long time. And my thing is, 
Whatever they decide to do to bury the hatchet amongst their race, that's their business. What they supposed to do. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I don't I don't get mad about it Can't. because I, I, I seen probably, it probably was meant to happen. I, you know what? As a young nigga, even though I ain't been in the system since 99, and just me looking at the landscape of things, I always felt without me knowing that how politics was going to play out, I knew way back in the 90s that shit was going to happen. I knew it because they look too much alike. They pro they program is too. They the same people. But they but the northerners got a cold structure. No, they, I mean, it's it's cold because like, the, the, the Serenio structure is cold. It's colder than they shit. That's deep. Yeah, that's deep, man. And uh, you know, like the bulldogs. Bulldogs used to be north days. And they that that's they like the Maravillas of the big situation. They yeah, separate yeah, themselves and get their own thing. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to the Fresno gangsters. Yeah, so I mean And the diamonds, the six dude diamond. And all my cousins, rest in peace to my uncle Grant cuz and Lil Grant, twice you, love all y'all, all my Fresno family. Mm-hmm. So I was telling you about my step towards change. Please. You know, there's an organization for juvenile reform, so we go up to, we try to I try to go to little facilities and talk to the kids, you know what I'm saying? So uh it's good, man. The organization is good. We trying to we trying to strengthen it. Oh, uh, and um, we doing it, me, Ron, Cheryl, Matt. We doing we doing a good job at what we try, what our strive is towards. You know, we might hit some bumpy roads, but at the end of the day, God got us. You know what I mean? Man, I, I hope in the future yeah. when you get that lineup of the names, my name roll off your tongue, man. I really want to be a part of that. I want you to do a, a, a rap. I'm there. Whatever you need, I got yeah. you. On hood, you know I see? got you. On my track or something. We gonna put it together. Whatever you, you need, yeah. But, but it's it's being pitched. The movie is being is being pitched right now. I met we met up with Bobby Brown. The, Bobby Brown and his wife. Okay. And he's on board to push the movie. So we we in the right direction. We in a we in a we in a good di- uh, direction right now. I'm gonna keep you posted on it for Please sure. Please do say and less. If y'all got some avenues. We got some avenues, man. No guarantees, but we got avenues yeah. that we could definitely, you know, look into, and hopefully something could pop, man. We got a lot of energy that he and I have been building, trying yeah. to rost- uh, foster, and the potential is limitless, man. When people from so opposite sides of the spectrum with just as much interest and knowledge on the same subjects we can create magic bro yeah man i just hope people look at this podcast and look at our interview as something don't look don't put too much into it just just see it for what it is it's all about trying to change lives man i mean my life has been changed likewise i'm a free man i've been i've been home four years so and to a lot of our listeners you spent their entire lifetime behind the walls you lived the life before that you've been living one since so yeah. p- to put that into perspective man that's that's awesome just to think yeah. about and you got you got other homies and individuals that done more time than me that's out here now and they yes. do, and they and they trying to make a difference they, shout they, out to big jack from six dudes yeah, one of the yeah yeah, yeah my co-defendant uh he out. He been out longer than me, but he living this. That's not no. Uh, my co defendant named oh, C man. Oh my bad. Shout out to C man. Uh, yeah, that's my co defendant. So I love that dude, and I love that dude to death, man. That's, that's funny. My, that's right. That's my, I love that dude to death. That's right. Girl. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, when you get out, you gotta have a different. Your mind gotta be. It's a different world. Tell me this: when we think about the movie scene, I'm gonna get you sucker. Yeah. So remember, dude, with the the, the uh, fish in his shoes. Yeah. Tell me your your version of that, or like in life at the end when dude finally got out and got to see the world. Tell me the the shit that shocked you the most versus what it was and what it actually was when you got out. Everything looked different. Like digital digital I, now. I, I went into my house <laughs> that I grew up in, man. Felt like my head was finna hit the ceiling, man. Wow, yeah, you was that much bigger. Yeah, I'm like, damn. Did it smell the same? No. Nope. Nothing like a dog. It was nothing about it that was like, oh, I'm at home. A picture. When you get when you get out of prison, it's like you breathing the something totally different. See, I know this from doing a couple stints of a couple years. Nothing that can compare or relate to doing triple a few decades. Yeah. Like I know that had to be a fucking yeah, man. Your, your, and the uh, only thing I got to get used to is people when you walk and people bump you and don't say <laughs> nothing. <laughs> they got a tendency of stepping on your foot and keep walking. Without you be like, the, yeah. Because in prison, you don't, don't even get that chance to right, bump somebody. You don't. Right. You don't get. You don't. It's not gonna happen. Right, right. But out here, it's like it's different. It's a different transition, but it's a good one because it right. gives you patience, man. Right. It gives you. I and, agree. And it broadens your understanding about people now, man. You say he don't mean no harm. I, man, I'm not going to try to add to that. I just want to agree that I've been learning a lot of those lessons as an individual, just on my own personal. I learned to love black people. 
I swear to God, I don't know what it is. I don't know how I missed this. I guess it was by design for, to be distracted and caught up in the things I was caught up in. If I would have loved black people like I do now, a long time ago, there's no telling what type of effect a nigga could make, could have made. In order to love people, you got to love yourself. There you go. So once you start loving yourself and appreciating the things that you're doing in your life, then you'll be able, you'll be open to love other people and their ambitions and what they're doing. And another thing, you so right, what caused me to naturally come to this realization is children and with how you want the world to relate to your children. And what the most, even though if you know it's not realistic, the best that you want for your children, if you were really a, a real motherfucker, you'll start trying to get that to the world. And that's yeah. the only way you feel like it's fair for you to even ask for it yeah. if you're giving it. So that's what calls me when I look at my kids and the way I want the world to receive them, accept them, and treat them. I try to treat the world in that fashion. Yeah, that's yeah. how it's supposed to be, man. That's what God intended, man. Right. God made that happen. That's Jesus God, again, man. The golden rule, do unto others as you would have. Cause that's on my mama, mama. I, I was raised in private school, you know that. And I went through a lot of religious training. I know a lot about that. And I kind of like fell away from the whole concept. And the only thing I held on to was do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think if each individual upon the face of the earth would just adopt that, We'll see harmony abroad, bro. Yeah. Oh God. I mean, that's the main thing. Yeah. That's the main thing, man. You ain't you ain't on social media? Let the people, if you are, anything you got, you got a Facebook or something. All I do is Ronnie Cool 47. Instagram, Ronnie Cool 47. I'm gonna tap in, I'm gonna follow you because I only follow a handful of people, but I'm gonna be following you on my I just know mind. how I just know how messy that how messy the internet is yeah. too, man. So But I respect people of your age that get on the internet, understand what it is, and still be able to maintain itself. Some yeah. people get lost in it. Yeah, they do. There's some people your age with reputations that rival, and they're so current. I even had to have a conversation with one. I ain't going to say his name because he kind of put my name in his mouth by reading comments and whoop, whop, whop. And it was like, damn, dude, you this dude. Don't let that internet get us into a, something that's so weird. And then I want to bow down and salute him because he allowed my little appeal to make him. Uh, and we didn't have to. And it just that was a beautiful thing. But yeah, because you got to even me being on the internet, I don't behave like the generation below me. I feel like I'm accountable to a certain way based on the era I came in and certain things we just don't do. Even though I was one of the pioneers of niggas that's really from this shit that was on the internet. And I, there's things I did 20 years ago on the internet that I wouldn't do today. I think this is a brand new internet on oh, my mama, mama. We got about two minutes left. I'm looking at the clock over there. I just salute my G's, man. Whoever I, I, I feel is my big homie and, and, and treated me like a big homie is my big homie. A That's big right. bro is my big bro because you, just because they older than you don't make them your big oh, homie. God. They, just because they've been from the hood longer than you don't make them your oh, big God. homie. It's how you conduct yourself and how you treat your homies. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? If you got them in the right direction, you teach them things they need to be taught in a way and without being manipulative about it, that's your big homie. That's your big bro. I can't say it no better. You know what I mean? So, so I agree with that. You know, I got a lot of big bros from my neighborhood. Right. Shout them out, big you, big D. Big Looney, Big Peanut, PJ, oh, and amongst a whole lot more. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. A whole lot more. Some is gone, some is here. You know what I'm saying? So Same here, cuz. I'm just, you know, it's, 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 it's just, I don't know, man. I just try to be who I am, the best me, man. Likewise. And if I can be the best me, nothing else matters, man. I don't care what nobody got to say about me, you know, because I, I, I doubt if they'll say it to my face. That's all I be You know on. what I mean? But they can say what they want. You know what I mean? Because uh, at the end of the day, I'm who I am. I love me. Likewise. So I'm open to love other people. So, you know, and my neighborhood, yeah, I love my neighborhood. Right. I don't love what goes on in that motherfucker. I'm not going to go out my way to be hanging out. Of course not. And all that, but. Of course yeah, not. Of course. Of course I, mean, not. I wish you would. I got my, the most reputable niggas that from my neighborhood that got the L's and they up against it on the four yards when if I ever have a conversation with them, like I'm paying any interest into any hood politics that might involve my emotions or you know what they tell me? Mm. Nigga, if you come back up in here, you could be my next door never. I ain't gonna have, never have nothing to say to you, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Sh sh shout out to my sisters, my family, my brother Cedric, uh, my Tiny Ron, he called himself Tiny Ron, that's my bro. My sisters, Shari and Tanya, they got dream girls. 
Uh, shout out to all my in-laws, my nieces and nephews. I love y'all. Family first. Uh, and, and to my homies, man. To my bros, man. I love y'all, man. Y'all already know, man. It's, it's me, man. I'm just who I am, bro. Man, I appreciate you coming through, man. I know you haven't made a habit of going public, and I know you might do more in the future, but I appreciate you for coming through, man. Based on my request, without hesitating, if you ever want to come back, get anything off your chest, just go through the same process again. You got an open platform, cuz. Much love. Neighborhood. Oh, neighborhood. And shout out to all my cousins, too. I love y'all, man. Oh, mine, too. And shout out to Special Stop. Uh, shout out to Stace. Stay slow from Southside Compton. Oh, my mama, mama, and Clint. Oh, my mama, mama, and Baby Cowboy, Westside 90s. Rolling. Night book. Night book. The life we live in now is all about the money.